All right, this is a quick look at a compare and a contrast of using iron-on vinyl, also known as heat transfer vinyl on wood, and then using permanent adhesive vinyl on wood. Which one's better? And just a general overview of how each will look and be applied to a wood surface. If you need more information about how to paint and seal your wood blanks prior to adding your design, you can visit part one of my video, which is linked below where we cover all of that and the supplies for that as well. I'm gonna be using um, some black iron-on smart vinyl here for the white, and then we're using some permanent adhesive white here on our little mini black sign. Uh, for the iron-on, you're going to need to have some sort of heat press. So I'm gonna use an easy press mini in this example, but you can also use the full heat press as well. Um, and then for your permanent vinyl application, you'll need transfer tape in that case. Um, so if you go the iron vinyl route, the additional cost would be making sure you have some sort of heat press on hand. Um, and then for the permanent vinyl, you don't have to have it. You can just use the transfer tape. Um, I also recommend having, you will need a weeding tool. You'll need a Cricut scraper to help burnish your designs onto the surface. And then a brayer tool can be very helpful for pressing the material to the mat. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my sample designs here where we're going to test this. All right, so I'm starting with my permanent adhesive vinyl here and I'm just gonna place this onto my mat. I'm using a standard grip mat here and I'm gonna use my brayer tool to smooth it out and push it on. And we're gonna go ahead and load this, pushing the double arrow button so that we can load our mat. I've selected um, just a premium vinyl uh, setting in Cricut Design Space. So I'm just weeding my permanent vinyl here. This is the permanent adhesive vinyl. All right, so that's ready to go. I'm now going to go ahead and cut out my iron-on vinyl for the compare and contrast with our iron-on. This is also known as heat transfer vinyl or referred to as HTV. I'm gonna be using the smart iron-on here, so I'm not placing this onto a mat, but if you're not using smart iron-on, you would place it onto the mat. Just make sure that it's shiny side down, okay? That's why we have to always mirror iron-on vinyl in Cricut Design Space, so don't forget to press that mirror button. So this is my iron-on vinyl here, and I'm weeding this now. Okay, so there's a look at the iron-on vinyl ready to go. And let's go ahead and pull these over here. I'm gonna start with the permanent here. And you're gonna need transfer tape for that because with our iron-on vinyl, we're just going to basically place it down and iron it on. But with this, we need to transfer it to transfer tape to apply it to our surface. So I'm gonna cut a piece of my transfer tape here. All right, and I'm gonna place down my transfer tape right on top of my design. And I'm gonna grab my Cricut scraper tool here and I'm gonna burnish the front and the back. Burnish, it just means we're rubbing it with the Cricut scraper tool so that it's gonna pick up our design. Once you've done the front, make sure you flip over and do the back. Okay, and then I recommend leaving it face down and peeling the liner away from the transfer tape. And if anything's not sticking, you can always uh, uh, crease it with your finger here and kind of roll it away and that will help. Everything for me is sticking really well. Okay, so now we have that transferred on there and I'm gonna go ahead and just lay this down. And this is just an example here just to show a compare and contrast. So I'm not too worried about centering it. I'm just gonna give it a quick eyeball there. And now we're gonna burnish this on. Now in the first video, uh, part one, uh, we went over how to paint and seal your wood blanks. So if you need to know how to paint and seal your wood blanks before doing this, um, you can watch the other video that is linked below and that will guide you through that process as well. These are blanks that I've painted and then sealed before applying this. All right, once you've burnished that on really well, start and begin to pull the transfer tape off. It's natural to wanna to lift up, but you actually wanna lift back at like a 90 degree angle. And that's gonna help those pieces wanna stay down. And if anything's not staying down the first time, then just go lay it back down and burnish it again. See, I have my A's coming up there. So I'm gonna give that another little press and it went on that time. All right. 
right, there is our permanent adhesive vinyl on wood. So that went on nice and well. You can see that it looks very nice. It looks kind of like a decal that's been pressed onto our wood. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the process of adding on our iron on here, okay? Um, now you do want to have a heat safe surface on hand technically since I'm using the easy press mini It's just going directly on the wood here um, But if you're using like the full press you're going to want to have some sort of easy press mat underneath um, When you're working with wood surfaces You need to either have uncoated butcher paper or like a heat safe teflon sheet to cover this up So I have a heat safe teflon sheet here and you can just use uncoated butcher paper as well. That's very affordable and easy to find. Um, this is one that's reusable, but I'm gonna put this kind of centered here. And then once I know it's centered, I'm gonna place this over. And then we're gonna start ironing this on. And because I'm using the Easy Press Mini, it's set to median here. Um, I am just gonna kind of hold it in sections for about 10 to 15 seconds at a time in sections and work my way around. Now the reason you need to have a protective coating here is because if you don't, it's going to burn your wood and it'll probably just color the wood. So you don't want that to happen. Um, if you're using a full size easy press, I recommend about 280 for 40 seconds. Um, Cricut recommends around 300 for 40 seconds. I like to go down and temp just a smidge because um, I don't want to scorch my wood. So I do about 280 for 40 seconds if you're using a full size press. All right, so once you think you've got that covered pretty well, you wanna make sure you let this cool completely. So if we don't let this cool, then the iron on vinyl is not gonna stick. Because with permanent vinyl, what happens is it's sticky on the back naturally, and we just basically press it on like a sticker. With iron on vinyl, the stick is activated when we apply the heat, and then it creates a bond between the base and your vinyl. But if it, um, the iron on vinyl hasn't had time to cool down, then that stick and bond has not had time to actually adhere and set. So make sure you do a cool peel on this, which means you need to be able to basically touch this and not feel any um, direct heat. All right, so this is completely cooled. Everything is sticking very well, I'm having no issues. And that liner is now off and our iron-on vinyl has been added to our wood. So when you give that initial glance, you can't immediately see a difference. When you're in person and you're more up close, you can. Um, with like this here, it looks more like a decal that's been put on, whereas this, because it's a matte everyday iron-on, it almost looks like it's been painted onto the wood. If you don't run your finger over it, you really can't tell that that's not been painted onto the wood. So if you're somebody who wants it to look more natural, like it's been painted, then I would recommend iron on vinyl. It also saves you the headache of having to work with transfer tape um, in the event that your tape just isn't cooperating or you're concerned about you know additional paint or anything lifting off. Um, but I have sealed these, which is why none of my paint was affected. Uh, when I add it on my vinyl, whether it be your iron-on or your permanent. What questions do you have for me about applying permanent vinyl versus iron-on vinyl onto wood? I would love to know. Go ahead and ask them below and I'll be happy to help you. If you want to learn how to seal your wood signs for outdoor use, then you can follow the link below in the video description. I have a part three video which goes over sealing uh, wood signs just like these and which sealers I would use. So I hope to see you there.